Alright, so in this video we're going to see how to use sine, cosine, and tangent, or SOHCAHTOA. Uh, previously I made a video on why we can use it, so now it's time to, to use it a little bit and see what we can do with it. So first off, what is sine, cosine, and tangent? Sometimes you'll hear the term, you know, this kind of nonsense word SOHCAHTOA, or words, however you want to say that, but they're just a mnemonic device to help you remember um, what it means. So um, what it is is so sine of some angle is equal to the opposite side divided by, that's the divided by sine, the hypotenuse. Okay, so and I'll show you how to how mathematicians abbreviate this here in a second. But it, it's good to see the words first. So let's say my we have an angle here. And um, maybe that's, uh, oh, it looks like about 20 degrees. Maybe a little more than that, probably more like 30. But it doesn't matter. This is 90 degrees. Uh, right, this is called right triangle trigonometry. So sine, cosine, tangent. When you're dealing with those, you're always dealing with the right triangle. Um, there's some other properties we can talk about later where, uh, with law, sine, law, cosine, that you don't need a right triangle. But when you have SOHCAHTOA or sine, cosine, tangent, you have to have a right triangle. And so if you have um, an angle of 20 degrees, and this is the angle we're going from, the hypotenuse is always the one across from the right angle. And... Um, Opposite side means opposite of the angle we, we chose, opposite of that acute angle. So this would be the opposite angle. And adjacent, so when we get to cosine, we talk about adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is the um, side by the angle that's not the hypotenuse. <laughs> so adjacent means right beside. And uh, so that side is right beside the angle we're dealing with. So that's the first step, is uh, knowing how to label everything. The second step is understanding some common symbols used in, in this sine, cosine, tangent idea. So the first one is theta. Theta is a Greek alphabet letter that we use to represent angles. So in our case, um, Typically, it's a symbol that looks something like that for theta. You could also use, you know, and you can use any variable you want, but typically mathematicians use like beta, um, alpha. Those are all used um, to represent angles. So sin, cos, and tan are shortened up instead of sine, cosine, and tangent. We, we Mathematicians shorten it up. So now you can write it out, sine of some angle equals O over H, which is opposite over hypotenuse. And that's where the so, katoa, the so comes from in SOHCAHTOA. Consequently, co, we write cosine theta equal uh, to adjacent over hypotenuse. That's the ka. Aha, that needs to be an A. Starting to write an A, and I made it an H. There we go. Sokatoa. And then tangent is the last one. So tangent of your angle is um, opposite over adjacent. So that's the toa part. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so let's see how this thing works. So let's say we had a right triangle. Here it is. And let's say this looks like maybe... 60 degrees, and uh, maybe we're only given one side, so maybe this side is, say, 10, and we want to find this side and this side. Okay, so what you can do with that is, first off, label all your sides. So Y is the hypotenuse. X is opposite of the angle I chose here. That is opposite. And 10 is adjacent. So 
again bringing up our so katoa I always you'll see people write that on their tests and things like that uh, before they take them uh, especially at college entrance exams and things like that uh, we want to find X first so let's go ahead and find it and we're given 10 and this angle and notice X is opposite and 10 is adjacent well the only one of the three that deals with opposite and adjacent at the same time is the TOA one which is tangent so we know tangent of our angle which is 60 degrees equals opposite over adjacent well opposite is X adjacent is 10 so now it's a matter of solving this thing to find X so we can go ahead and find out what tangent 60 is so here's a calculator for us one thing uh, with Google it defaults to radians so and most and some calculators do so you want to convert that so you're in degrees and so you just type it in so tangent of 60 degrees we'll hit enter and it's 1.732 typically I go for four decimals but uh, it's kind of you know you could use significant figure figures or things like that but 1.732 all right I'll remember that so 1.732 we know that equals X over 10 so now it's a matter of just solving this algebraically we'll put this over 1 and we can cross multiply or come up with a common denominator but uh, 1 would be times X 10 would be times 1.73 so we know X is 17.32 if you multiply that together approximately so this is 17.3 okay so now let's find Y and I'm going to erase our work for tangent so Y in our case is uh, is hypotenuse and maybe let's we'll use green for this one so we're given adjacent here uh, we want to find hypotenuse and so adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine so you just plug it in so cosine of our angle a lot of times when kids first start this or anybody who first starts this they forget to put the angle there so cosine is adjacent which is 10 over hypotenuse which is y okay same thing get your calculator out and find out what cosine 60 is but I always write the ratio down first so cosine 60 degrees yep we're in degrees so we're good to go and that is 0.5 okay so we'll go back here and substitute 0.5 for cosine of 60. So 0.5 or 0 0.5 equals 10 over y. We'll put this over 1 to make it a proportion. And we'll cross multiply. So 0.5y equals 10. So y equals 20. Because 10 divided by 0.5 is 20. And it's always good to look at your sides to make sure it makes sense so this side's 10 this side's 20 this side's 17.3 okay and they that makes sense now one thing um, I want to talk about as well is we wouldn't have had to use 60 we could have also used the 30 degree angle here um, we know that's 30 because 30 plus 60 plus 90 is 180 so we know that's 30 now if we would have chosen the 30 to go from instead of the 60 you would get the same answer but now instead of the 10 being adjacent notice its orientation is opposite the angle we choose so this would be opposite and X would be adjacent your hypotenuse stays the same so this would be adjacent so that's another one that tricks tricks people up when they first learn this is you got to pay attention to which angles we go from we don't typically go from the 90 degree angle and uh, that's again a topic for another video always stick with the adjacent uh, or with the uh, acute angles alright so let's do another one so 
All right, so let's say, uh, in fact, let's do it from up above here. So here's 90 degrees. Um, this is 15. Yeah, it looks more like uh, 50 degrees. And uh, we're running out of time. We have, I went over what I wanted to do. So let's say that looks like maybe 50 degrees. I don't know. It could be more. It could be less. And this one, um, we'll say we have this one, and it looks like maybe 12 inches. I don't know. Not that you need inches. And we want to find Y. Well, again, using SOHCAHTOA. Um, label all your parts. So Y is your hypotenuse um, because it's across from the 90 degree angle. 12 is opposite of the angle we're choosing. So this is opposite. And we don't want to find this side because I don't, I'm out of time. You could. But we'll just, we're just going to set one more up to see how you do. And uh, so this is opposite. And we want to find hypotenuse. Well, the only one available is sine that has opposite and hypotenuse in it. So you set that up. Sine of your angle, sine of 50 degrees, equals opposite 12 over hypotenuse y. So you just get out your calculator, do sine 50 degrees equals 0 0.7660. So... So I'll move it up here. So I'm going to plug 0.766 into this equals 12 over y. We're going to cross multiply. So 0.76, um, oh, that should be a 6, 0 0.766. y equals 12. So you would divide then by 0.766 because we're just solving for y. Kind of ran out. Sorry, that's so sloppy. So 12 divided by 0.766, get your calculator out. And uh, what's nice is you can, with this, you can go 7 divided by, it has your answer stored, 0.766, you can see it there. And it's 9.1 approximately. And which doesn't make sense. So, oh, it's 12, excuse me. Whew. Must be getting late at night. I don't know where the 7 came from. So 12 divided by 0.766. And that's always why you check your answers. Uh, 15.7. You know, that answer I got made no sense. 9 doesn't even make sense. So again, 15.7. And that makes sense because it's bigger than the 12. It's got to be bigger than the 12 or we've got problems. And hopefully this helps, and I'll see you next time.